Well, good morning, church. Uh, we are blessed to have you with us today. And those of you at home, we welcome you and are thankful for you joining us online. If we do have any visitors today, we do say welcome. Uh, we have visitor packs in the pews in front of you for anyone to take. Uh, we also have uh, bags at our welcome table for first-time visitors with the mug and some other uh, little things from the church, so we encourage you to take one of those as well. Uh, but we are glad to be able to worship together here today. And I want to share a couple of uh, announcements with you. Uh, we are in the middle of Lent and encourage you uh, to join us for all of our Easter festivities and during Holy Week. You'll find um, flyers that you can keep for yourself or hand out to neighbors and friends on our uh, table in the back with all of our Lenten stuff, stuff in which it uh, speaks to um, uh, the Women's Symbolic Supper, uh, Monday, Thursday, our Easter Extraordinary Adventure on, I get it? Okay, there we go, close enough. Uh, that's going to be on the Saturday before Easter. And then, of course, our Easter Sunday, in which we proclaim the glory of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so you're welcome to all of that, and we encourage you to invite family and friends. Um, also during Lent, we are participating in our Lenten Vespers in worship, and I want to invite forward Pastor Britt. She's going to talk to you about this week's um, event and then also a youth event today. Yeah, so this Wednesday we're having our youth taco salad supper. And so it's real great. Uh, uh, we hope you come and join us. You know, we're going to have all the fixins. Uh, you know, it's kind of like this nice big plate of nachos and cheese and beans and just all that delicious stuff. So, uh, and this, this uh, does help our uh, support our mission trip. So we're going to Oklahoma City with Next Step. And so the proceeds from this will go to help uh, fund our trip. And then for today, for our youth group, we're going out to Rochester to Bolosity, I think that's how you say it, uh, for a day of uh, laser tag and bowling. So come on, bring your A-game youth, and it'll be a lot of fun. I've been practicing, so watch out. We'll give an extra blessing to anyone who can uh, tag uh, Pastor Britt um, during the fun and festivities. Uh, but uh, indeed, uh, we want to include you in all that the church does. Um, and today we are blessed to have uh, Lydia Barron lead us in our introit. Um, and so now let us prepare our hearts to worship our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth.
Now let us stand together as we sing our opening hymns, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, number 261, and Refiner's Fire, 374. They're found in your blue hymnals this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for your presence with us. We ask that we can continue to dedicate ourselves to you during this time of Lent, to reflect on what you have done and how you have loved us. And God, we thank you for all that you do for us. 
And we are grateful that we can come here today to worship you. And so God, let us all just feel your presence today. Amen. And you may be seated. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, and can be found on page 81 of your New Testament Pew Bibles. And we do see here a lovely story about, uh, that Jesus gives us about two different ways of being. And we are given this example of someone who maybe on the outside seems very God-fearing, but on the inside might be lacking, while someone who on the outside doesn't seem God-fearing, but on the inside their heart is just longing for God. So let us hear now from this parable in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. He told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. And we do thank God for his word this morning.
job by our spirit ringers. We thank them for uh, the blessings that they provide. And now it is time in which we'll go before our God in prayer as we lift up the concerns and joys of our congregation. Uh, before we uh, take any uh, from the congregation, I do want to share a couple of updates and a few new prayer requests. Uh, Lonnie Hoff, we've been praying for her. Uh, she is having more tests this week, but uh, they still do believe that uh, it is stage four cancer, and so they're determining treatment plans. So we'll continue to pray for her and her son, Matt. Uh, we do want to pray for Pete Walker. Uh, Pete was diagnosed recently with prostate cancer, um, and he has had prostate surgery um, and is recovering from that. Uh, I don't know treatment plans yet, but uh, lift Pete and Cassie and the family uh, in your prayers as well. I uh, also want to lift up uh, Lanny Kretschmer. Uh, Lanny's a new member, but recently suffered a heart attack. Uh, he has been um, hospitalized and underwent triple bypass surgery. Um, he's recovering and doing well, but they're uh, having uh, trouble getting his blood pressure under control. So we'll pray for Lanny, and we will also pray for Karen, uh, his wife. So uh, we lift those up. Uh, are there any other requests we would like shared uh, this morning. Yeah, Ron? Praise God. So you see that big smile on Ron's face. It's been there since the surgery or the treatment. So um, we pray that it stays. Ron is pain-free uh, from his knee issues, so we praise God for that. All right, well, let's uh, go before our God in prayer. Lord, this Lenten season, we do look towards the cross. Daily we, f we reflect on your love and your mercy that sent you to that cross. And so, Lord, when we do survey your wondrous cross, we are consumed by the blessing that you have given us, the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness that you have extended to us. And so we praise you, Lord, for the sacrifice and for the love that you have. And God, we ask that we can follow in your steps, that we can follow closely to you, that your refiner's fire will continue to purify our lives as we seek to give over to you all that we have and all that we are. So Lord, we praise you for the blessings you've given. But Lord, we still come with our needs, with our concerns, with our struggles, so we ask now that you will hear us in this time of silent meditation as we indeed bring our prayers to you and we ask that you will hear our prayers. We thank you, Lord, for responding to our needs. And now we lift up these needs that have been shared before us as we pray for Lonnie Hoff, uh, still trying to figure out the diagnosis of cancer. Uh, we pray for the test that she'll be experiencing this week. And we lift up her son, Matt. We pray for uh, Pam's daughter-in-law, Tisha, whose mother passed away. And we continue to pray for 
Pam's mother-in-law, Donna, who is recovering from pneumonia. Lord, we praise you that Ron is doing so much better and is pain-free, and we ask that this treatment will continue uh, to provide that, and we just uh, praise you for the gift that you have given him. We lift up Pat Rodewald's brother, David, who was hospitalized, but is now back at his nursing home, and we pray for continued health and healing in his life. Uh, we lift up Dolores Ross, who has suffered from heart palpitations and feeling um, unwell. And we ask that you will continue to heal her um, as they try and figure out the right treatment and medication for this. Uh, we pray for Pete Walker and his family. Uh, as Pete was diagnosed with prostate cancer and the surgery that he's undergone, we pray for your healing hand to come over him and his life. Uh, we lift up Lanny Kretschmer, who's recovering from a heart attack and triple bypass surgery. Continue to allow his body to mend and heal, and we pray that they're able to determine the cause for the blood pressure issues, and we do offer him and Karen to you uh, today, Lord. And God, we thank you for the blessings of Minnesota Teen Challenge as they, they came and shared their worship and their gifts with us last week. We pray for their upcoming spiritual emphasis week, uh, for conversion, for um, people just learning of Christ and following after you. And we do, Lord, continue to pray for all the clients uh, who are struggling with court issues and um, other issues that they are trying to battle with now. And so we thank you, Lord, for hearing these prayers. We also uh, lift up the violence and continued war in the Ukraine and ask for your blessing and your peace to somehow come over this land and that you will just put an end to the bloodshed and that, God, that there somehow, some way, that peace will come over that region. And so we thank you for your, your love and your care. And so, God, we offer our lives to you. And we offer this prayer to you today. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray that is found on our screen this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as you consider how you can offer yourself, your time, your treasures, and your talents to our God... We pray that you will search your hearts and your lives uh, to find ways to give to others so that all can know and experience the love of Christ. And if you are led, we encourage you to give your offerings at our giving stations at the back of the sanctuary when you are able. So Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have given us. May we return them to you so that you can use them to bring about your kingdom here on earth. And so we offer this in your name. Amen.
now please remain standing and turn to your neighbors and greet each other with the peace of Christ. turn to your seats, I'd like to invite up the children here with me. I know. How y'all doing? Yeah? You have a good weekend so far? Awesome. Hello? Hi there in the back. You can come and join us too. Well, I have a question for you all. Has someone in the last week or month or ever done something wrong to you or not? not? Yes, Grant. Whoa, that was a quick answer. <laughs> you can't, you don't know now. Okay. Yes. I shoved my face in the snow. What? You want to write that on the board for me? I can't write upside down and like behind it. So they shoved your face. That's not nice. Okay. That, I think that would hurt, right? How about you, JC? Anyone do something not so nice? They threw ice. Oh my gosh! Yes, it's uh, it's winter still, I guess. So we're still throwing. There you go. We can just write shove, and then throw things maybe. All right. Anything else we can think of? Well, that's good enough for now. All right. So this is like stuff that people did wrong to us, but. Have we done stuff wrong to other people? Maybe. Maybe what have we done? Yeah, call people names. That's not very nice. Yeah. Maybe we didn't include someone else. But... You know, there's something really awesome about our God, is even if we do wrong things, he'll forgive us, right? And so, what should we do if other people do wrong to us? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> you don't think we should forgive them? We should forgive them. Okay. But we shouldn't do anything back. Yeah, okay, I see what, you're right. We shouldn't do anything back, but we should forgive them, because you see, where did my bottle go? You see, this is like, on here, and we can see very clearly what we've done and what other people have done to us. But God comes, and you want to wipe this for me? God comes, and he wipes away those things we've done. And so we should wipe it away for others and make the slate nice and clean, right? All right, thank you. Let's all pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for just forgiving us when we aren't always at our best. And God, we ask that you give us that same heart of forgiveness to forgive others. And all God's children said, amen. amen. And now if you're up to second grade, you can go up and join Miss Emma in the back for Sunshine Singers. And I will not break things. <laughs> We've got others. Wonderful job. Thank you, Britt, and thank you, children, uh, for always being such willing partners up here. Um, as we uh, enter into the fifth petition in the Lord's Prayer, I want to encourage you to open up to page, uh, let's see, page 20 in your New Testament Bibles, or the Bibles in front of you in the New Testament, uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. Uh, we, as you know, are progressing through the Lord's Prayer during Lent. Uh, last week, we didn't have a, a typical sermon. We had Minnesota Teen Challenge. But they came and they shared um, in their own lives how God has given them that daily provision of grace, of strength, of love, and support as they fight their addictions and battle their own struggles. And uh, I don't know about you, but I felt that same sense of of daily blessing, that God has provided for us what we need to get through the day and trusting that tomorrow He will do the same. 
And so now we enter into uh, the next petition, um, and that is uh, petition number five, and we're speaking on forgiveness. And the biblical story today is another parable that Christ is going to share that will speak on the idea of forgiving others. And so let us turn to Matthew 18, and we're going to read verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Christ and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive them? As many as seven times? Well, Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all their possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to to their Lord all that they had seen and had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. We praise God for his word this morning. Amen. Well, by far, the question that I am asked most regarding to the Lord's Prayer is found in that fifth petition that we are focusing on today. The question is, why do different churches use different words to explain the idea of sin and seeking forgiveness? The right ones say debts and debtors. Oh, wait. So Sorry, that wasn't in my notes. Some say debts and debtors. Some say trespass and those who trespass against us. Some even say sin and those who sin against us. Now in our tradition, we have historically used the term debts and debtors. But others well-established and well-meaning denominations and traditions use the terms trespass and those who trespass against us. Others, not so commonly, but still it is used, use the the phrase sin and those who sin against us, and even some failures and those who fail us. So who's right? And what are we really praying for? But maybe more importantly is why does this difference even matter? As far as a correct understanding goes, we must acknowledge that this issue is only in our own English traditions and understandings of the terms. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the Bible, as it was being translated into English and other Western languages, there were subtle differences that led to these differing terms. In the 1200s, John Wycliffe translated the Bible into German, and he, and I believe correctly, chose the term debts and debtors 
when translating the Greek, Greek manuscripts. This translation was then carried forward into English by the New King James Version, or the King James Version in the 1500s. But however, in between these times, William Tyndale translated a Bible into English, and he loosely translated the term into trespasses and trespass against us. And so it was in this proliferation of various translations that has caused these two differing terms to be rooted in our individual traditions and histories. In fact, we even find differences in the original text. Matthew and Luke, who both recorded the Lord's Prayer, use differing Greek terms to uh, identify the idea of sin and forgiveness. Matthew uses the phrase, the Greek phrase, ophelemata, which means debts. While Luke uses the term amartai, which translates into sins. And so both are different, but both carry forward the central idea that we have incurred a failure against our Lord, and we must seek His forgiveness, and that we are also obligated to treat others in the same manner. And so regardless of the, the words that you use, the central truth of the fifth petition remains the same. For both Matthew and Luke found these debts and these sins as both our failures of action, and they were also that we were obligated to repair this action in others. And so the debate over the usage of the proper term, I believe, has also taken away from the true meaning of this passage. Do we really grasp and understand in this simple prayer as we pray for our debts that all that we are obligated to has been canceled? Our trespasses have been forgotten. Our failures have been repaired. Our offenses have been corrected. Our sins have been forgiven. That is what this petition means. And so today I want us to turn our focus towards the concepts of this forgiveness that are on display rather than the particular words that have been chosen to describe this belief. Forgive as we forgive others. That's the challenge. And so to define this idea of forgiveness, I want us to look at really where this comes from. And what scripture tells us. Again, in the Greek, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive is translated from the Greek word aphaemai, which means to let go, to release, or to send away. So in this prayer, we are letting go of our sins, we are releasing them to our God, and we are sending away all that entangles us. All that separates us, all that holds us captive, all that binds us in the chains from the past regrets and our current failures. Do we realize, brothers and sisters, of what we are praying in the Lord's Prayer? We are praying that God will release us from the rightful punishment of our actions. We are praying that God will release us from the debts of sins that we have incurred. We are praying that He will let us go from the trespasses of our wrongful actions. And we are praying that He will send us away from the wages of our sins. We are praying that we can share in this forgiveness. Share with our God and share it with others. So that is what forgiveness is, but let's understand what forgiveness is not. Adam Hamilton, who is leading our, or we're using him as a resource for our Lenten Vespers, says this about what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness does not mean that all the consequences of our sins have been released. Forgiveness does not excuse the action of the one who has wronged us. 
Forgiveness also does not always even lead to reconciliation with the other person. Forgiveness is not forgetting. But forgiveness is releasing our resentment, our visions of retribution, our bitterness, and our hate. See, forgiveness in any language or word is a choice of one of... is one of the greatest gifts that our God has given us. And it is one of the most amazing things that we can offer to those around us. Like Pastor Britt shared, when we forgive, we wipe the slate clean. That's what forgiveness is. And I want to remind all of us who were here last Sunday that if you want a picture of forgiveness... Take a look at that service. It's online. You can check it out. It is the service of the Minnesota Adult Teen Challenge. As we saw 50 men up here pouring out their hearts through their testimonies and their stories about what forgiveness meant to them. And I was forever moved by the opening song that they sang. Brought a tear to my eyes, as I know it did to many of you. That song by Big Daddy Weave, I've Been Redeemed. And I want to read to you the opening lyrics. It seems like all I can see was a struggle, haunted by ghosts that lived in my past, bound up in shackles of all my failures, wondering how long it's going to last. Then you look at this prisoner and you say to me, son, Stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. That's the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Jesus asks us to pray this regularly. He he asks us to pray for a forgiveness that we seek out. And then to pray for a forgiveness that we give to others. That is what Christ is telling us to do. And in our two parables this morning, these two wonderfully simple stories, that's what God is sharing with us. The moral of each one of these stories is about forgiveness. First, seeking that forgiveness from our God, and then sharing that forgiveness with those around us. Briefly, I want to look at these two texts again. So if your Bibles are open, uh, turn back to Luke 18, verse 9 through 15. This is a simple story in which Jesus tells of a, an amazing truth. And I guarantee you it was not a story that was not unknown to those around them. Although this is a parable that's definitely, you can imagine this actually happening in the time of Christ. We compare our two individuals in this story, the Pharisee and the tax collector. We look at the position of both. We know with Pharisees that they were the religious leaders. They were the example of the piety of the day. They were respected and often they were feared for what they could charge you with. They were the elite, supposedly the standard that everyone should adhere to. But then we see the position of the tax collector. We know that this was a Jew who literally was betraying his fellow Jews. Tax collectors were seen as deceitful. They would give to Rome, but then they would skim off the top from their fellow Jews to pay their own fare. And so they were viewed as worthless in the society. And so we see both of these individuals coming to God in prayer. Their positions on either end of the spectrum. And then we look at their postures. The Pharisee is standing tall. Scripture says they would go to the center of the court. They would go to the corners of the streets and they would stand so that everyone could see them 
offer their prayers to God. So we see this Pharisee standing tall in public, chest bowing out proudly so that all could see him and all could understand who he was. And then we see the posture of the tax collector shrinking away off in the distance, not really wanting to be seen by anyone. He didn't even raise his eyes to heaven. He took the posture of a sinner while the Pharisee took the posture of a saint. And then finally we look at their prayers. The Pharisee prayed about himself. He bragged to God about who he was. He bragged to others so that they could hear. And then he condemned those around him. He condemned this tax collector. And he thanked God for not being like him. Does that sound like a prayer of someone who is seeking forgiveness? It was unlike the prayer of the tax collector. A prayer that was humble. A prayer in which he begged for mercy. A mercy which he realized he did not deserve. He came to God with a broken and a contrite heart. In every way we see the differences between the Pharisee and the tax collector. The tax collector, it says, beat his own chest while the Pharisee was content to beat his own drum. We need to follow the example of the one who begged for mercy, who bowed before his God and asked for forgiveness, a forgiveness not based on status or wealth or position. It was based on humility. Let our prayer be the same as his. And as we approach God with that humility, we too will beg for mercy that we don't understand. And it will be granted to us, just like it was to the tax collector. So we seek God's forgiveness. That's the first part of our prayer. The second part is that now we need to grant that forgiveness to others. Turn back now towards Matthew 18, and we find our second parable. And this one was more directed towards its audience. Peter, again, um, oh, God bless Peter. He's trying. But here, he was trying to elevate himself in front of his God. The rabbinic law requires that you would forgive someone three times for a similar offense. And so what does Peter do when he comes to Jesus? He says, Jesus, how much should I forgive? Up to seven times? to show that he was so much better than those around him. But Jesus answers, importantly, not with a number. He answers with an ideal. Uh, Other scriptures say rather than 77 times, other traditions say 70 times 7. That was the answer. That was the ideal that we should all strive for. And it was an example how Jesus' mercy far far exceeds that of Peter's or that of humanity. Our job is not to count the number of times we forgive, but rather to simply forgive as many times as necessary. And so then Jesus tells the story of the unmerciful servant. We find the master initially asking for his debt to be repaid. A debt so extravagant there was no way anyone could really pay that back. 10,000 talents was equivalent to $10 million in our day and age. And so the master, rightly under the law, asked for that account to be reconciled. But the servant, he could not pay it. So he begged for forgiveness of the debt. And so we see the master, he feels compassion towards his servant. He releases him from his bondage. 
And he ultimately forgives him of his debt. But then in the twist of fate, the unmerciful servant, now forgiven, goes out and sees a fellow slave who owes him a small, meager amount. A hundred denarii would equate to maybe 10 or 20 dollars. And in his anger, listen to how he responds. Just moments after being forgiven, he runs to the slave who owes him money. He grabs him by the neck and he begins to choke him and demand payment. And when the servant begs for mercy, he doesn't listen. He throws him into prison and he demands full payment. That is the story of what we are required to do with others. The moral is simple. Jesus Christ has forgiven us an unpayable debt. He went to the cross and he forgave that debt freely. He has released us from the chains of bondage that hold us and confine us. He has given us our freedom. And now he has asked us to return that same freedom to those around us. But how many of us look to those who have offended us? Look to those of us who have said the wrong things about us. Maybe owe us a debt that they haven't paid back. Maybe someone that has hurt us. And how many of us run up to them and choke them in anger and say, I'll not forgive you for that. Well, if we do, then we will suffer the same fate as the unmerciful servant. Listen to what Jesus says. Should you not also have mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his master moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers who would repay all that was owed. And then Jesus says, my heavenly father will do the same to you if you do not forgive his brother from your heart. See, God has granted us forgiveness. And we need to grant that to those around us. The problem with the unforgiving servant was that he had received this forgiveness, but he had not experienced the joy of what that meant. And because of that, he could not enjoy the forgiveness that he could give to others. We must experience the joy of our forgiveness this life-giving, life-changing blessing that our Lord has poured upon us. That is what we must share with others. And so the prayer today for all of us, let us forgive others just as our Lord has forgiven us. Amen? Amen. Let's stand now to sing our closing hymn. We're going to sing... Hymn number 382, Forgive Our Sins as We Forgive Others.
reminder, following the service and our fellowship time, I do want to invite anyone who would like to come to our study beyond the pulpit in which we talk about the sermon. It'll be in the parlor uh, beginning at 11 o'clock. And so now let us go forth in the power and protection and peace of our God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And may we go forth in his name. Amen.